In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create a thumbnail for your YouTube videos in After Effects. A lot of people think that in order to create a good thumbnail, you have to use Photoshop and that After Effects is simply not capable of doing it. But that's completely not true because I create all of my thumbnails for my own YouTube videos in After Effects and it's been working great for me. That's why I wanted to share with you the method that I use. So of course, every thumbnail will be different depending on the content. Since I post After Effects related tutorials, let me show you an example of how I create one of my thumbnails for my own videos. The first thing I do is I import the video of the final result of what I'm going to show you in the tutorial. Then I drag it to the timeline and create a composition with it. As you can see, we now have an entire video in the timeline. And the next thing I do is I just scroll through the timeline trying to find the frame that I really like that I think is good enough for the thumbnail. So let's just choose a random frame. Let's say I, for some reason I just really like this frame. So I want to have this on my thumbnail. So I could either place a marker by pressing asterisk to mark that single frame. So now I know whenever I go to that frame, that's the one I liked. Or I could just right click the layer, go to time and select freeze frame. And by doing that an entire video on the timeline will turn into that single frame that we chose. And the next thing I do is I grab the After Effects logo, drag it to the timeline above the footage, press S for scale to adjust the scale because usually the logos are too big. And you know, once you adjust the scale, I like to place it to the bottom left corner. And let's add the stroke outline. I've shown that in my tutorials, I even have a like user presets already uh, that I usually use. So let's just create this from scratch. Let's just for drop shadow, add this to the logo, set shadow color to white, Capacity to 100, distance to 0, and softness to 200. Now let's search for simple choker, add this to the logo, and set a choke amount to a choke mat to minus 10. Now we have a nice stroke outline on our logo. That's like a thumbnail industry standard nowadays, like you have to have those outlines on like things. So yeah. Now let's go for the text. Let's select the type tool. And for the text, it's really personal preference. You can use whichever font you like. I personally like to use like a thick and bold font so it's easier for the viewer to to read what's on the thumbnail. So integral CF bold works just perfect. But let's type the text and like you can type something like keywords so something that would highlight what's in your video. So in this case this is a neon lines background so that's exactly what I'm going to write. Neon lines. Let's press enter to go to the next line and let's type background. And then I would select the text, open the Align tab and just align the text in the center. So again, depending on what you have on your background, uh, you might not want to put the text in the center. Let's say if I had logo reveal or logo animation here, I would not want to cover my logo. So I'd probably drag the text down. But in this case, this works perfect and like right in the center. It's not covering anything important. So now we have our text, but it's really hard to read and there's no separation between the text and the background. So let's add this separation by adding drop shadow. Let's search for drop shadow in effects and presets. Add this to the text, set distance to zero and softness to 20, then select the drop shadow, press Ctrl D to duplicate it. For the second drop shadow, set softness to 80, duplicate it again and set softness to 200. And now you can see how much easier it got to to read the text and there's clear separation between the text and the background so that's without and that's the width and if it's not enough you can always just select the drop shadow number three duplicate again and create even more contrast and make it even easier to read but make sure you don't go too intense on it because you might start covering what's on the background so just try to go for three or four drop shadows at max that should be good enough and once I have main text ready, I like to add an extra keyword somewhere else, like at the bottom. So I just select the text, press Ctrl D to duplicate it, drag it down, double click on it to change the text and just add an extra keyword to so something that what makes the, the video special. So in my case, the video, uh, this tutorial is about like a looping background. So this is a, like a seamless loop. So that's a special thing about the tutorial. So I want people to know what this is about. That's why I'm going to type a looping and just adjust the position of it closer to the bottom. I could also change the color to better highlight the, the words by selecting the, the word, go to the colors and just changing the color to something that stands out. So maybe like a bright orange that has a really nice contrast. I think in my original thumbnail, I even added a hashtag at the beginning 
So think of it, let's say you could add like a no plugin there to let people know that this tutorial does not require any plugins. So I usually do that as well. And as you can see, this video already has a built-in background because that's the way I rendered it. But if, say, you didn't have it, I would just right-click, select New Solid, we'd call this BG, drag it at the bottom, then go to Effects and Presets and search for Gradient Ramp, add this to the BG layer. And then I would just select the colors that I think would match the scene well and give them a really dark shade so they would not be too destructive. But as I said, this video already has a background, so that would not really apply to this. But you can always do that at any point. And once you're happy with how this looks, like I would consider this like a good enough thumbnail that I would use for my YouTube videos. In fact, I have. <laughs> so then you would just uh, you know scroll through the timeline again, finding the, the perfect frame that you want to export as a thumbnail. So let's go back to that original keyframe that we've created. Press B and then press N to bring in composition start and end point to mark that one single frame. Then go to file, export. And here you have two choices. You could either use After Effects built-in renderer that I do not suggest you do, or you can use Adobe Media Encoder, a software that is meant to be used as a rendering tool. And it has all of the formats that you would need compared to After Effects built-in renderer that lacks a lot of core formats such as mp4 but that's not the topic of this tutorial i'm going to show you both methods anyway so let's select the add to render queue first you'll be presented with this then click on the blue lossless word then you'll be presented with this window click on the format and select jpeg sequence you could use png sequence as well but the, the issue with it is that the file might end up being too big for youtube thumbnail to be uploaded so I suggest you go with JPEG because JPEG generally has lowest file size and you will not have any trouble with uploading to YouTube. Also, there's no visual difference between the two, so just go for the one that has the lowest size. Then go to Format Options and select the High Preset. Or you can go for the Maximum and then click OK. You can leave other settings as they are and click OK. Then click on the Output to the blue name. And here you're free to choose the folder where you want to save your thumbnail, specify the destination, click OK, then click on the render. It'll take a second to render out your thumbnail. Let me bring it in. Here's our folder and here's our JPEG thumbnail. Let's click on it and here it is, ready to be uploaded to YouTube. And now let's do the same using Adobe Media Encoder. Let's open up After Effects in the same composition. Then go to File, Export and add to Adobe Media Encoder Q. It'll take some time to open the Media Encoder. Also, you'll need some time to display your request here, just wait. And once it opens up, you can see that I have different presets here. You probably do not have those, but that's okay. Just click on the uh, blue that says JPEG, or it might say something different for you. Just click on that word. Then you'll see this window. Click on the format drop down, and you'll see a lot more formats here. Select JPEG, then scroll down to the video settings, and here you set quality all the way to 100 and you can leave other settings as they are. Click on the output name, again, specify the destination, give it a name, and then click OK, and click on the Start button to start the render. And again, it'll take just a second to render out your thumbnail. And then you can find your thumbnail in format of a JPEG inside of the folder that you've specified as the output destination. If you found this tutorial useful and actually learned something new, please give this video a like, that would help me out a lot. Either way, that brings us to the end of the tutorial. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.